There we go. It's a little better. And my finger covering the flash. Um, now here, this uh, my read switch. I'm going to read switch. I'm sorry. If it was a read switch, you would have the timing as an issue. So where you position this magnet, at, sorry, not the magnet, but where you position this uh, switch, whether it's a read switch or a relay, makes a huge difference in RPM and torque. And so that that also is a factor that comes into play. You need to adjust it, you know, preferably electronically, with your uh, resistance setting. So when you're using when you're using a mechanical uh, setup like that, it's very difficult to adjust the timing. It can be done. You, know, you need more like a, a car electromechanical type setup, the olden days type uh, distributors. And uh, let's see, what else did I want to cover? Okay, so another uh, point I wanted to go over on this type of motor is if you look at the layout of the magnets here, we have eight ring magnets around the the, sh the rotor shaft. I'm sorry, the, the rotor. And that's not a very good layout because what happens is as you're, you know, you can drive it with just a single coil and as you lay out your, your pickup coils all around the, the unit, you know, this is your drive and your self, this is your drive coil and your self-running coil. So what happens is the, you know, the drive coil will push, the other magnet comes in and runs your, your back coil, your back EMF. It's not technically not back EMF, but as you drive it and push that coil, you're, you're creating your zero point right here. That's your, your magic is happening right there in the coil. Your core, uh, the type of core you use, you know, moo metal is actually much better. But if you use uh, silicon steel, is a, a good bang for your buck. You'll get the most value and the most performance out of a silicon type steel rather than soft iron or ferrite. Now, so you have your eight uh, magnets here, and the major problem that comes up with these type of motors is, is this layout on the the radial layout of the magnets. Uh, what that does is it steals torque from the motor. Now, if you open up a ceiling fan motor or most uh, electric motors and you look at the way they're engineered, you'll find a lot better... There we go. Here's an example. You'll find... See how that, that magnet configuration is on this rotor? You have a uh, torque created that way. And that's the way you want to lay out your magnets for a, a better type of Bedini. Uh, motor. And so what happens is, it, <laughs> let me get that off. Yeah, you got to be careful with these neomagnets. So anyway, you want to have uh, a better layout to your magnets here on this, this type of assembly. Because what happens is as you start to draw power off this, this system, this mechanical system, power comes out and so you're going to lose RPM. RPM will drop like that. So you compensate for that by having a lot of inertia built up in the, the rotor disc here. That, the heavier you can make it, the better. The second thing, you want to drive it with high uh, voltage and as many amps as you can get through that wire. It takes a little bit of engineering and uh, spreadsheet layout to figure out what you want to do there. But <clears throat> go for the most amps and the most volts you can get. Uh, there are not really any models uh, that we know of. Other There's Faraday's law, which covers amps mostly through a coil. And so you look at the, the you don't really look at the voltage in terms of what it takes to drive, uh, uh, you know, this rotor. And most of the equations that we do know about are laid out for amp flow. So that can make it kind of difficult because the you know you're just focusing on amps and not the volts. And when you're using thin wires and high voltage, low amps, you're not going to get the type of, of performance you need here. Although we do find, like in the EV gray type motor, that very thin wire, high volts, and low amps will give you some performance. So that's an uncharted area as far as unclassified type research into these electric motors. The problem is is that we don't really have any mathematical model for voltage through a coil. We have amp flow through a coil, but not volts. And so when you have that the, that idea done, where you have you just need your improved torque on this type of motor, 
and also the improved type of coil pickup. So the more efficient your coil is, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but efficient coil and efficient torque creation off this motor, and that's how you improve these things to be much more high performance than they are. And uh, it's a good motor. It's a good system. Uh, they need to be more of a hybrid between the EV gray type motor and the Bedini motor. And then you have something that, that's a lot nicer. The EV gray motor, the problem with that is the, you know, spark and the, the, the rotor shaft, the way like Doug Conan is driving in the spark through rollers and things like that. It's a little bit too electromechanical. And one of the problems you have with these, these layouts is that, uh, you know, you want to have them reliable. You want to try and use, uh, you know, as many solid state components as you can. You want to use some modern electronics. And the problem, the other problem with these things, and here's something to think about, is that you're ultimately limited by RPM. The number of magnets you put on will raise the, the not the RPM, but the hertz that runs through the coil. And you're going to get much more power output, you know, when you spin this thing faster. Um, but remember, you don't have to spin these things at all. You can move over to solid state type components and just regular frequency generation through the coil. The motor itself is not the heart of the system. The Bedini layout with the, the magnets and the, and the rotor shaft, that's not, this is not the guts of it right here. It's, everything is right here in the coil. So this is the heart of power generation, not this. And when you move over to this and forget all about this stuff, then you, you're into a whole new fun ball game. And uh, that's it.